I'd like to also congratulate Matt, who was a close friend, still is a close friend, and uh, played together with Matt here. And what a great honor bestowed to him, and uh, certainly deserves it. And uh, having a bright career with the SEC Network, and uh, what a great honor it is to have him represent the University of Georgia and the Hall of Fame. So appreciate that and honor to him. <coughs> um, you know, open up. We're, we're moving on to Auburn, who we've got tremendous respect for. Uh, Gus does a, a great job with their program. Um, obviously, it's the first time in a long time, probably ever, that we've played them three times in what really amounts to a calendar year. And uh, these guys got a good football team. You know, when you look at them defensively, they, they're, they're, they're loaded up front. They've got a lot of big guys. Uh, they've got a lot of players who played a lot of snaps. I mean, they're experienced across the board. On their defensive unit, it seems like every guy has been there for three years and uh, played a significant role. Um, and then offensively, I think every time you play uh, one of Gus's offenses, it's uh, it's it's time consuming, it's frustrating. Um, he does a lot of misdirections. They they come right at you and hit you in the mouth like they did last year. They've got really good skill players to take shots with, and they do a great job on special teams. Always have. So it'll be a, a tremendous challenge for our guys um, as they move on from the Kentucky game into this game. And I know our players and our coaches have a lot of respect for uh, the way Auburn plays the game. So uh, I'll open it up with a couple of the, the injury stuff. Um, Miko, I think will be fine. Um, he had an ankle, probably could have come back in the game. He should be fine today to practice. Um, Lamont had a hyperextension. Um, he's going to be uh, limited today, but we think he'll be fine. Um, we'll see how he progresses the next couple of days. Ben continues to progress. Uh, Thought he could have played if he had to in the last game. Um, so we hope he continues to get better. Um, I think that's all of them. If not, I'm sure you guys will ask. Kirby, I guess due to the uniqueness that you touched on, I mean, normally y'all would be trying to avenge a loss to Auburn, but you did that a month later last year. Is there still motivation from last November's game, or, or how do you kind of move that, or do you even need motivation in a series that's been this close after 120-something Leading. Yeah, it's it's a rivalry game. I mean, it's you know so many of our kids recruited by them, and so many of vice versa. It's just it's always a rivalry game, and I think that a uh, big part of that is is being at your best when your best is needed, and that's the challenge for our guys. Um, we're playing at home at night in our stadium, which I think is uh, really important to our fans, important to our players, uh, to protect our home turf, and and we want to put our best effort forward. And, Certainly going to have to with uh, the challenge they present because um, they've got a lot of good football players. Coach, uh, I've seen you mad before. I don't think I've seen you any madder than you were uh, Saturday night when you guys failed to get in on first and goal again. Uh, I know that's something you guys are trying to address and you really need to address against this team. Mm -hmm. Is uh, if what what's your conclusions to this point uh, that you're seeing there that just that. that the physical toughness is not there. Or is it uh, play calling? What What do you What do you? Uh, I don't. I, I really don't think it's that. I think we worked really hard on it last week, and that's probably the most frustrating thing is that we didn't uh, overcome the obstacles we had previously. And it has nothing to really do with play calling. And it's not the maddest I've ever been. I, I was more disappointed in the, the some of the organizational things, not necessarily what we did, it's the way we went about it. And we'll continue to work on it and get better at it. Uh, Kirby, uh, I don't know what. Uh, how, what was the extent of the celebration for winning the East, and and how much uh, will you get into the team about not not looking at that other team in Alabama? Yeah, that, that's not a case for us. I mean, obviously the the locker room the guys are fired up, guys are excited. I mean, I think any time um, you play another top ten team and you have a, a big win, it's something to get excited about. These guys work really hard for a long time, so to being able to enjoy that moment, that big game for uh, the trip home, and then Sunday we move on. I mean, it's on to Auburn, who's got a really good football team. And they, they, they get your attention the minute you turn the tape on because they've got experienced quarterback, they've got an elite arm, they've got a lot of really good wide outs that are talented, fast, extremely fast, and they've got a defense that's been there forever. So, I mean, th there's not anybody on our team that's going to be worrying about anything but Auburn because – that's the next task at hand. I mean, that's that's what we have to be focused on. Our goal is to uh, play the next team, whoever the next team is, and we don't try to have too many too real big highs and no real real lows. We want to stay right neutral in the middle. 
along those same lines, uh, does the experience last year of Clemson in the East about the same time with a known or other important games for the head-on schedule help uh, with these teams, the guys that have been through that? Yeah, I don't know if that helps. I think the focus, what helps is playing well. And you, your, your play is reflected by your behaviors, which are your actions in practice. And it all boils back down to that. I mean, we can make it psychological all we want, but at the end of the day, it's how do you work during the week? What are your what are your behaviors in practice? And your behaviors lead to uh, playing better. And that's what we're trying to do right now is play better. Or ever since the bye week, it seems like you guys have gotten back to a bit more of what you did well last year, you know, in terms of running the ball. You know, what was maybe said? What did you guys do on that bye week to kind of refocus and play well these last two games? We just worked. I mean, we just worked on the things we weren't doing well, and uh, that was a big part of it. I mean, I don't, uh, we didn't, I didn't think we were running the ball well before that either. I mean, um, we've we had some success before that. We had to improve. We've had a lot of young players that are trying to grow up, and they still need to grow up. I mean, we got some guys out there that have played a lot of football that they have to continue to play better. But there was no magic potion the, the off week. We just worked. We tried to work on points of emphasis for each unit. Um, Coach, I know that things uh, change based on the flow of the game. But after Saturday, uh, you were talking about Justin Fields and the plays that he made in the running game. I mean, uh, do you feel like there's a little bit more of a of a familiarity and more of like a sense of is Jake going to be the guy that being able to bring Justin into that running ability? Do you feel like there's more uh, there's more of a rhythm between the two now? I, uh, you know, I, I think that Justin doesn't have to come in just to run the ball. Justin's a talented quarterback. He's growing as a player. He's getting better. Um, the more roles we give him to benefit our team, I think it helps us. Um, he's also, you know, 230 pounds too. So he presents a lot of uh, uh, issues for a defensive unit. And I know that from having to coach against guys like Justin. But uh, he's a talented player that doesn't just have to come in the game and run the ball. And I think he and Jake work well together. And continue to do that, and we'll use both of them where we see it beneficial. Uh, I know that, um, you know, the, the line situation had to be frustrating with the guys going down, but um, <coughs> Isaiah's kind of been a steady guy there on the right side. You know, in his first year, how have y'all evaluated the job that he's done so far? Uh, he's growing. He's getting better. You know, I thought last year he uh, got frustrated early and just kept working, spent some time on the scout team, got better. Uh, he still is a work in progress, just like our team is. I mean, there's things that he didn't do right Saturday. Uh, he plays physical. He's a, he's a big man. He's, he's worked hard to get better. Um, he's held up against some tough guys in pass pro. I think he takes pride in that. But he'd be the first to tell you that he didn't do some things right Saturday in the run game that he's got to improve on. You know, he's going to play against some really good front guys this week. And when you don't step with the right foot, you don't take the right angle, you don't approach things the right way, uh, these guys can expose you. So he'll keep working, and uh, hopefully he'll keep getting better. Kind of sticking with the running game, I was wondering, um, I remember you spoke after the Miss or the Middle Tennessee State game about Elijah Holyfield, but just since then, kind of what's allowed him to mature as a runner throughout the season? Probably carries, I mean, to be honest with you. He's always been mature. Um, he's a very mature kid that, that uh, he worked his tail off when nobody knew him because of the feature backs we had, and we all knew what a workhorse he was. He came down to the scout team and got to see him do it against a really good defense last year. So opportunity is probably what's presented itself to him. Kirby, with uh, Holloman and just the amount of times he's been targeted the last couple of games and he had that really nice block on Edwards that sprung swift on the touchdown, is he, um, I don't know, maybe exceeding what you thought he could be? Because obviously he's got a really prominent role here down the stretch. He works. I've said it before. He works really hard. He, he blocks really physical. It's, everything's important to him, all the details. You know, he's on the punt return unit. It's uh, one of the better ones in the country. He takes pride in that. He's a backup on kickoff coverage, backup on punt team. He just works. So the guys that work and play physical and catch the ball when they get the opportunity, he's taking advantage of some opportunities he's been presented in the Florida game. Uh, he took advantage of the opportunities he got last week. But he's not the only one in that room. I mean, there's, there's a group of, of young men in that room that do a great job for our run game, for our special teams. And then when we get an opportunity to throw it, um, they're able to take advantage of it. Uh, Coach, if you could update uh, Kate Haynes and also comment on the young players that contributed at Kentucky. 
Yeah, Cade had a little bit of a stinger. Um, he's probably going to be limited today. Um, and we don't you know we don't know how much further it'll go, but we expect to get him back. And um, I know he's a tough kid. He'll push through it. But medically, Ron and them are going to keep him out uh, of some contact today. But, again, he's tough, competitive, a lot like our rest of our freshman class. He's working really hard. And uh, those guys, as a unit, are getting better. The, it was not just the freshmen. I say freshmen. I'm talking about redshirt freshmen. But all those guys. So don't think of it as last year's signing class. Look at it as – two-year span of guys that haven't had significant roles. I think uh, those guys are growing up, getting better. And I said it after the game last week. Some guys got in the game that hadn't been getting in the game um, because we got to use them. They've got some attributes that we need, and um, I'm pleased with those guys' growth. I just hope that the maturity allows them to handle whether it's a little success uh, in the case of Channing or Adam or Brenton or a little frustration in the case of somebody that's not playing as much as – they want to. They just got to keep getting better. Coach, it's uh, hard not to notice with uh, Todd Gurley and you know Nick and so many dudes in the NFL right now. You've got you know, Swift and Holyfield uh, on your team right now. You've also recruited against two of those members. Can you just talk about what having that kind of legacy and uh, what what kind of uh, value that is when you're going out and recruiting running backs? And obviously, you guys are committed to running the football too. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, it helps tremendously to have the guys, even the history of the Robert Edwards, Garrison Hurst, Terrell Davis. I mean, Hurst, I mean, they're just the back after back after back after back. And now it's probably more prominent than it's ever been because of the stage that Todd's on and what he's been able to do with it. And, and Nick and Sony's exposure last year through the national championship game, I think that, you know, if you're a premier back in the country and you say, I want to go somewhere that I can learn to play in a pro style, catch the ball in the backfield, I also want to be able to protect so that I can increase my value and also want to have durability where I'm not going to be beat up when I come out of there. There's nowhere better to go. So um, these these guys recognize that, and that's why Dale's been able to recruit at a high level. Kirby, I know there's some times where time of possession isn't the most important thing. Um, I guess like Spurrier's fun and gun, what Bama's doing this year. But when you're playing off, you're playing that fast tempo. How important? I think you had the ball for like 39 minutes your, your two years ago over here. How important is it to win that time of possession against Auburn to keep that offense off the field because they wind up having a real quick drive with their with their style? I think it goes back and forth. I think it's a lot about what kind of team you are. Um, you know, if you've got depth defensively and you think you can extend those drives, the most important thing becomes can I get off the field on third down? Um, you know. The Auburn teams have been different over the years, too. I mean, they've they've had really fast scoring ones. They've had some long, methodical teams that, that go on long drives. It's a lot more important what we do than what they do. And um, you got to go execute regardless of what they do. They, they've got some up-tempo stuff, and they do a really good job of it. And you got to go out, out and execute them. you got to go out and be able to play fast, and your kids got to get lined up. It's what everybody in college football works on now in the offseason to get ready for it. Follow up on uh, some of the young guys who are having to, to play right now. Uh, over your career and history as, as a coach, how does that kind of stack up on the amount of kids that are having to play that you're having to depend on right now? I don't know statistically. I can't tell you what the most I've ever had play and what the least I've ever had play. Uh, we've got a lot of them in R2D, and it's mainly because I think eight or nine of them came early, so that helped them get acclimated. That certainly had an effect with Cade and uh, maybe Trey and those guys that came early, they, they got to get to work earlier. Um, <clears throat> but I, I can't tell you, I, I, I just know these guys are working hard and uh, you want to bring good players in your program. But it's not just getting them here, it's getting them bought into the principles and values and doing what the seniors want and buying in. And then also learning and dealing with the frustration of being away from home. Uh, this group is starting to overcome a lot of that and get better as they get more and more experience. Coach, another one about a specific young player, Tyson Campbell. It seems like he's been getting a lot of those reps earlier than a lot of those guys. What specifically do you feel like he still needs to grow on at, at the position he's at right now? Well, he's got a lot to work on. I mean, Tyson has uh, been a factor of a little bit of lack of depth. Uh, he's been a factor of playing a position that's not quite as complicated as 
some of the other freshmen are at, and um, and he's talented. Um, but he's grown up. Uh, he'll continue to grow up. Uh, when you play opposite DeAndre Baker, you're going to get a lot of attention, and uh, he continues to get a lot of those. And he's got to continue to improve and work on a lot of things, whether it's tackling, eye control, doing his job, knowing the assignment of every play. Because out there sometimes, you know, you get away with maybe a wrong technique because you've got a guy man. You can't get away with that when you're the linebacker that's got to make the call, when you're the quarterback or the running back that's got to protect. You can't do those things. And um, he can, and, and uh, he's been able to grow, and uh, he's got to continue to improve there. Coach, I know you've been across the line of scrimmage or coaching box, I guess, from Arizona plenty of times. What has he done that's been a little bit different with his offenses? What did he bring? And, and I guess the rest of the SEC public probably pretty much knows his offense anyway. Yeah, when you're saying, I don't understand what you're asking. Is he like this year specifically, or what are you talking about? Physical. They never run the ball. I mean, people think it's all sideways. And, you know, when they've had elite backs, they really run it well. When they've had elite quarterbacks, they really run it well. Um, they've got more wideouts now than I remember them having as far as vertical threats and guys that can run um, and throw the ball down the field and a quarterback that can get the ball to them. Um, I got a lot of respect for the job he does. And they've always created a lot of problems because of the tempo and because of the window dressing. And they do all that, but they still run the ball at you. Kirby, what's been the difference for Nod over the last few weeks? Getting, seeing him drop some screens in the passing game. You know, I really think it's just opportunity. It's just his number. It's not like we call a play and say, this play is going to Nod. I, I really think the two-minute drive at Florida opened up for him, and you know they played some coverages that were made it easy for him. I mean, it wasn't that he was out there beating somebody in coverage man-to-man. -man. I mean, they didn't cover him on some. And then they played a soft zone where he got the ball, and then he did a good job the other day. You know, he uh, he beat a guy across the face that was man-to-man. -man. And I know Jake's very comfortable with those tight ends. And I think Isaac, at the end of the day, knows the offensive system better. He understands where coverages are. He knows what leverage to take. And uh, he's taking advantage of some, some good opportunities.